Hey, what's up my dudes? Deveorn here, bringing you part 7 of our Divine Spellcasting Guide series. In this video, we're going to be talking about every spell available to Cleric, Druid, and Shaman at level 7. We're going to talk about what they do, what they're good for, and whether or not you should be taking them in your Baldur's Gate 1s. We're also going to be talking about the spells added to the Icewind Delification component of SCS. Now, the same quick caveats before we get started. We have a tier system set up where S tier is spells that are amazing. A tier is spells are situationally amazing or okay or pretty good. B tier spells are spells that are okay and situationally can be useful. C tier spells are spells that you really shouldn't be using unless you have nothing else. And at the very bottom is RP tier spells or spells that are absolute crap and are only useful for role playing purposes. Now, the same rule set that we talked about before applies here. Everything I'm going to be saying is in regard to this particular set of rules. We play on insane difficulty, so everyone in the party takes double damage. We play hardcore, so there's no saving and no reloading. If the main character dies, it's game over and back to Baldur's Gate 1. And finally, we have all components of SCS in Ascension installed and maximized to their hardest difficulty. All the ball spawn, Demogorgon, etc. will be using a variety of nasty abilities. Anyone eligible for high level abilities can and will use them against you. And all the magical creatures in this game will be given a variety of magical toys and tools to play with in addition to all the wonderful AI improvements that have been added to the game. So everything, like I said before, is going to be in regard to that particular set of rules. However, 99% of what I say will apply to your core rules on modded runs as well. And I'll do my best to highlight those differences as they come up. For example, a spell may be really awesome in the base game and absolute garbage in, with this new set of rules and mods and vice versa. So the first spell we have up here is Confusion. This is available to clerics, druids, and shamans. This is a level 7 divine spell. Chaos Sphere lasts for one round every two levels. Decent cast time of 7, 15 foot radius with a complete negation upon a successful saving throw. If they fail their save with a minus 2 penalty, they're going to be wandering around, standing confused, or berserk and attack nearby uh, NPCs. In addition, as always, any confused creature that is attacked perceives the attacker as an enemy and it acts according to its basic nature. This is the exact same as the level 4 Mage Spell Confusion. Level 4 Mage Spell Confusion, we already talked about in the past, why it was pretty... It's a good spell on paper, but it gets replaced immediately by Chaos at level 5. The fact that you get this at level 7 as a Cleric is just embarrassing. It really, really is. Now, I talked before in the past why Divine Clerics have uh, weaker spells in general compared to Arcane Casters. They get to wear full plate... They get shields, they're drawing their power from their god, not reading scrolls, nerding it up at the library. There's all these reasons why divine magic should be less than arcane, right? If you have a mage who's out of spells and a cleric who's out of spells, the cleric is going to be less likely to die than the mage, right? For obvious reasons. More HP, more uh, different weapons they can use, etc., etc. Armor available, availability, etc., etc. So we get why divine magic is weaker, but it didn't have to be this weak. The fact that this is a level 7 spell, you know what else mages get at level 7? Sequencer. You know what they can sequencer? Confusion. That means a mage for the same level 7 spell can sequencer three confusions, which do the exact same thing this spell does. That is insane to me. Absolutely insane to me. Absolutely insane. So to get this as a level 7, uh, spe at, a level, at spell level 7 as a divine caster, is just, it makes no sense to me. It makes absolutely no sense. Does the exact same thing, but the fact that you get it so late... And using up a very valuable level 7 spell slot is just, it's absurd to me. It makes it absolutely absurd and makes it absolutely C tier in my book. I mean, a mage can sequencer these and even better, a mage can spell trigger a group of, uh, of chaos spells, which are going to be uh, save, do the exact same thing, but have a minus four penalty to save. And they have to fail, they have to pass their save three times with a sequencer or spell trigger. So it's just, it's painful. There's a lot of spells here that we're going to be talking about that are just so absurdly weak that the only time you're ever going to see use of these spells is if you're running very heavy Divine Caster. Like you have Viconia, Animan, and Aerie in the same party, and even then, like, it's still tough to make use of some of these. So, C-tier spell all the way. The spell in and of itself is not a bad spell, but the fact that you're getting it at level 7 is just, it's beyond brutal. Really awful. C-tier all the way. Up next is Conjure Earth Elemental. This is available to Druid and Shaman only. It's a summon spell, lasts one turn per level, very long cast time of nine, and it has the exact same stats as a Fire Elemental, except it's Earth. The Earth Elemental will have a 60, 35, and, 16, and a 5% chance of 12, 16, and 24 HD um, 
Uh, hit dice, as I mentioned before, the exact same thing as the fire elemental. So you have a chance of summoning a stronger, beefier earth elemental. But it doesn't matter. Because the earth elemental does not get the damage reduction that the Prince of Earth gets. It does not have the same immunities as the Prince of Earth gets. These can be hit with plus three weapons. Most enemies in the game at this point are going to be using a plus three weapon. Every magical creature in this game is going to be using a plus four or higher weapon. Um, even gas in Baldur's Gate 1 actually strike with a plus four weapon. I didn't know that until I went and uh, did some playing around with the editor. Hilarious though, right? Hilarious. The fact that this thing that you could be using in Light Throne of Ball gets hit by a level three creature, beyond amusing, right? They don't really have that much HP. They do have a decent amount of strength, but they don't have a lot of attacks per round either. So these things can hit fairly hard, but not that hard. So when you play as a druid and you use the Earth Elemental Transformation, or you summon the Prince of Earth or something like that, it's easy to think that Contra Earth Elemental would be good too, but it's not. These are just so weak. They don't have HP. They don't have the same resistances that a Fire Elemental has. The fact that this is a level 7 spell, not a level 6, is really confusing to me. Because these are honestly weaker than the Fire Elemental. This is more useful. Because enemies will be using Fire a hell of a lot. What the hell immunity does Earth get, right? And, and when's the last time you had somebody hit you with some Earth magic in Baldur's Gate? Never happens. I mean, it's just... It's... It's underwhelming. And again, they're so big and bulky and slow that it's really hard to make use out of them. You, maybe you could like throw them in a doorway, right? To block some enemies, like the corridors where the vampires just stream through so quickly. Or mind flares. But then you remember that both those creatures can go invisible and teleport. So it's like, well, shit. <laughs> you can't use it there either. It's just, I'd struggle to make use of these things. I really do. I've tried several times to like find a situation where I'm like, yeah, Earth Elemental is perfect here. But every single time, it's just underwhelming as hell. And they die in seconds. It's just embarrassing all the way. Big piece of crap. Big skip. C tier all the way. Up next is Creeping Doom. Creeping Doom is literally the exact same thing as Insect Plague, but it does twice as much damage per tick. So instead of ticking for one damage, it does two. Uh, duration of three rounds, cast time of five, so very quick. No save to have it spread. As we said before, no save to have this spread. The save versus breath is only for the spell failure and the fear. Just like before, this will attack and eat stone skins. Enemies who have protection, uh, fire shields up or um, protection from magical weapons. Um, the, uh, God, name escapes me right now. The mage spells. The crappy ones that are crappy versions of protection from magical uh Weapons. The absolute immunity ones. You guys know what I'm talking about. I, I don't know why I can't think of their names right now. It's been, it's been a rough couple weeks. It's been a rough couple weeks. But this will not break through those. In addition, they will be killed by, um, by Death Spell. So, when it comes to hitting wizards, just like we said before about Insect Plague, this has been nerfed heavily. Very heavily nerfed. And it's still an amazing spell. Anytime you're fighting thieves, this will actually find the thief in stealth and start biting him. So you can see where they are at all time to avoid being backstabbed. Enemy fighters, because their saver's breath isn't amazing, they'll get feared all the time and run around in panic. In addition, two damage per second, that's not bad. It's not amazing, right? It's only last a couple rounds, so at the end of the day, that's what? 12 times three rounds, 36 damage. Not a ton, but it's not bad, right? 36 damage is not bad in addition to basically guaranteeing that uh, if for some reason you are a wizard or a cleric and you didn't have one of these spells available to keep yourself safe, I mean, you're basically guaranteed to not get a spell off at all. At all. And the damage is really not insignificant. In the original game, this is the best spell in the game. Bar none. Like, this is the best spell. I would put this above Improved Alacrity. I would put this above Time Stop. I would put this above every spell in the entire game. In the original unmodded game core rules. It's that good. But even with all the nerfs it's got, it is still an S tier spell. Still an S-tier spell. Do keep in mind, as I mentioned before, this has been nerfed heavily, so it won't go through their protections, and it also will not affect undead, so you can't hit liches like you could in the original game. But that being said, all those things combined, it is still worth casting every single fight, because it does a decent amount of damage, and it just it disrupts the enemies so damn well. So damn well. Don't forget, save versus breath, the absolute worst fucking save in the game. I thought this was save versus breath too. It says spells here. I'll have to test that a bit more. I thought that was breath as well. But save versus breath, absolute worst. Save versus spell isn't great either though. S tier spell all the way. Take and cast this. Just like we talked about with insect, pl er, insect plague. This is the exact same thing, but a little bit better. 10 out of 10 spell. Great things, you know, said about it more. Up next is earthquake. Earthquake's a big piece of crap. 
This will last for three rounds, so we'll do three tremors, decent cast time of nine with a 15 foot radius, and what will happen is just like your regular cloud spell, this will affect once immediately, and then every round thereafter for two more rounds, it will do a subsequent effects. So the first round, 66 points of damage, and people inside will fall to the ground for four rounds unless they save with a minus six penalty. In which case, the damage will be halved. At the second round, is 3d6 with a minus 2 to half the damage. And the last round is 2d6, successful saving throw, no penalty to have the damage. Additionally, any time you cast this spell, there's a chance that you will summon an angry earth elemental who will attack the party. I've used this spell about 30 times. This only happened to me once. So you can basically throw this out the window. Although when it does happen, who cares? We already talked about the earth elementals. They're garbage. They'll die in seconds. Don't worry about it. However, this spell hits allies too, and that's where this really, really struggles to be a good spell. The fact that you're able to knock down your own party in Baldur's Gate is devastating. In BG1, for those who don't know, Sleep, Command, and Color Spray was coded differently. In the original Baldur's Gate, original, original Baldur's Gate, like before Tales of the Sword Ghost, if you hit somebody with a sleep spell and attack them, they woke up. You could not murder them with impunity like you can in uh, the Enhanced Edition which uses the BG2 engine. And the original Baldur's Gate, if you got hit with CC like that, enemies would not attack you because they didn't want to wake you up. It was a true crowd control. It was like the polymorph from uh, WoW, right? You don't hit sheeps. You don't hit sleeping targets in the original game. So the AI was coded to avoid hitting sleeping targets. You may actually see this in the Enhanced Edition sometimes, where like you'll get hit with a sleep spell and enemies will actually not attack you, but go and hit other people because it's that same stupid AI. But, um... In Baldur's Gate 2 and Throne of Ball, you really don't see that. With SCS, it really boosts that AI um, to make it to where that really doesn't happen. So if you get knocked down for four rounds, that is a death sentence. That character is guaranteed to die, basically. If there's enemies nearby, they will focus them and blow them up. I had a game recently where Saravok got hit by an implosion spell, which is a stun for one round. One round. Not even two seconds later, he exploded into tiny little pieces. Tiny little unresurrectable pieces. So this is very, very dangerous. Very dangerous to cast on your own party. And if you're trying to interrupt enemy mages, there's better spells to do it. Like the Druid HLA does, uh, I think it's a tiny bit of damage of multiple uh, elements. Uh, Cloud Kill, you can uh, you can put in a spell trigger. Same with Death Fog. I mean, there's all sorts of AoE spells that are really good at interrupting spellcasters. And this just really isn't one of them. It just really isn't one of them. Now, the thing you got to keep in mind here is that this will always do damage, right? Once per round, it will always do damage. There's no saving throw negates like are on, that are on some other abilities. But as I said before, it doesn't really matter because the damage is so inconsequential and the chance of you actually interrupting a spellcaster with this is just really, really unlikely. And again, the fact that you could just knock your whole damn party down or like say, for example, you cast this at a mage in the back and you're not paying attention and somebody charges ahead and fights the mage and gets knocked down, that dude's going to die. So you got to be really careful with this. You got to be really careful with this. In and of itself, again, it's not a bad spell. If this was party friendly, I'd probably say it's a strong A tier. But the fact that this will hit your party members too, for me, is just C tier all the way. The only time I'd really ever use this spell, again, the same with the confusion, right? Is if you're running a very heavy uh, cleric druid shaman party. Very heavy cleric druid shaman party. And even then, it's just tough. I don't know if I said this, but this is for uh, druid and shaman only. Same with uh, creeping doom and earth elemental here. So, it's just really tough. C tier for me all the way. Up next is Firestorm. Again, same thing we talked about before. Unless you're running really heavy druid, you just don't want to use this spell. Decent cast time of 9, duration of 4 rounds, and every creature, again, all creatures, not just your party, will, uh, not just your enemies, will take 2d8 points of damage. This is fire damage, and there's no saving throw. So the damage itself is already lackluster. But we already talked before about why fire damage is the most... It's the least useful of elemental damage because there are more enemies with fire resistance than anything else with the obvious exception of undead being immune to cold and uh, poison so it's really hard to make use out of this and especially again when you're fighting enemies and throwing a ball right enemies who are wizards or clerics or druids will cast protection from fire drow have their magic resistance um demons are basically immune to fire uh, most dragons are immune to fire as well I mean, et cetera, et cetera. You just you run into a lot of times where this is just not going to do anything. And again, the fact that it's only doing 2d8 and hits your own damn party too, it just kills me. At least with Incendiary Cloud, you can chain contingency a couple of them together and just drop a massive bunch of fire onto the ground. Which does hits way harder, by the way, right? I think I did the math for Incendiary Cloud. It basically can do... If an Incendiary Cloud ticks for the full damage and duration, it does over 1,000 damage per enemy. 
Like, what the actual fuck, dude? It's absolutely ridiculous how much damage it does. Absolutely ridiculous how much damage it does. But it's just Firestorm, man. Firestorm is just sad. It's a sad, it's a sad comparison. It's the same thing, right? It's like, it's like Druid spells are really level four mage spells. Like you can, with the exception of Creeping Doom, like Confusion, level four spell. Firestorm, this is only going to be a little bit stronger than a Cloud Kill, you know? It's really painful. Really, really painful to me. Don't forget, Cloud Kill doesn't get a save either, right? If you're the Cloud Kill, you take 1d10 damage, unless you're immune to poison, period. So it's just, it's tough. Again, if you're using multiple uh, clerics, druids, or shamans, you can cast multiple of these, and so you kind of can make it do decent, but even then, it's just, it's garbage. It's just garbage. Up next is Impervious Sanctity to Mind. This is one of the best spells druids, uh, clerics, and shamans get. This is added from the SDS Icewind Daleification component. It will be for the caster only. Long casting time of 9 lasts 8 hours, and this will make them immune to Charm, Confusion, Fear, Feeble Mind, Hold, Sleep, Maze, Berserk, Intoxication, for eight hours, in addition, you are immune to spellcasting failure. In addition, you are protected from a breach or a spell thrust. All these spell, all these things are nice. All these things are nice, but they're not great. What makes this great is this. Spell Shield is a level five mage spell is an, and is an S tier spell. This is Spell Shield in addition to all these other protections and it lasts for eight hours. Absurdly powerful. Absolutely absurdly powerful. You combine this with Entropy Shield and Shield of the Archons, and you now have magical protections on par with a wizard. That is insane. And the original Baldur's Gate, the reason clerics are so much weaker than wizards is because their immunities were non-existent. And the SCS Icewind Daleification component fixes that completely. Clerics are now just as safe as a wizard, if not more so. Because Entropy Shield gives them massive bonuses in addition to the immunity to remove magic. Impervious Sanctity of Mind lasts way longer than Spell Shield and gives them other bonuses in addition to the one you want the most, which is a protection from an anti-magic attack. And then Shield of the Archons is a shitty version of Spell Trap, but that was always in the game, right? It was always a shitty version of Spell Trap. But again, you combine all those things together and your Cleric, Druid, or Shaman is now sitting real pretty when it comes to magical attacks. Really, really, really good. And interestingly enough, this is the only spell in the game I've found that actually makes you immune to the anti-magic ray ability of the Beholders. Beholders with SES will be able to use their eye stalks to do a variety of nasty abilities. If you have a Cleric or Druid with Protection for Petrification, Protection for Magical Energy, Impervious Sanctity of Mind, and Death Ward, they are immune to Beholders. There is nothing a Beholder can do to hit you. However, note I said the word Beholders, not all eyeball people. Hive Mothers, um, Tyrant Golems, and not Death Tyrants, but there's other one other one I'm missing. Some big brain eyeball bitch can, uh, can strip this protection shit away. But you are immune to the anti-magic ray, and that is incredible. Absolutely incredible. That alone makes this S tier. But the fact that it does all this other shit too, and you can combine it with all the other shit, just, it's, it's absolutely amazing. If you want to make your Cleric, Druid, or Shaman safe when fighting wizards, Definitely cast this shit. Entropy Shield, Impervious Sanctity of Mind, Shield of the Archons. Your dude is sitting pretty. As long as you make sure you don't get breached twice, you're going to be in good shape. Really can't say anything interesting or cool about it aside from those two things. But it is that. It is really, really, really good. In stark contrast to Mist of the Eldath, which is available to Cleric and, or to, excuse me, to Druid and Shaman only. Also added from the Icewind Daleification component of SCS. This is a big piece of shit. Very long cast time of 9, uh, happens instantly. This is a 7 foot radius, and it's a heal that heals disease, poison, and 25 HP. But it's not party only. This will heal enemies too. You know what else heals for 25 HP? A mass cure. A mass cure being cast by level 15 cleric will also heal for about 25 HP. But this is party only. Cast time of 5 compared to this, which is a cast time of 9. So you actually cast Mass Cure faster than Mist of the Eldath. I can't think of a time where I'd ever want to use this. Maybe against Demogorgon when he's doing that weird AoE bullshit. You might want to cast this out real quick and who gives a fuck if you heal him 25 HP. But like the fact that this will heal your party and enemies alone makes this a big piece of shit. And 25 HP, you get that shit out of here, man. Maybe if your party just got hit with an AoE blind, 
and you can't cast True Sight on everybody, you'd want to use a Mist of the Eldath to counter that shit. But your party is never grouped up all six people and then get hit by an AoE blind. It just doesn't happen. It just does not happen. This spell blows. C tier all the way. I don't even want to talk about it anymore. It's gross. Get it off my screen. Just got to put my hand up here and so I can't see it anymore. Up next is Nature's Beauty. This is a weird one for me. This is also available to Druid and Shaman only. Cast time of six happens instantly 15 foot radius with a saving throw in the gate. And basically what this is, this is a Whale of the Banshee combined with a Power Word Blind. The Blind itself is no save. The Blind itself is no save. You are going to get blinded when you get hit by this spell. If you fail your save on top of it, you die instantly. Enemies obviously are immune to death spells and have death ward up are going to be immune to this shit, but that blind is still pretty damn useful. Blind is pretty damn useful for fighting enemy fighters, right? Enemy fighters will stack up on, on, a, on a target, right? So you can send your druid in with an iron skin, cast a quick nature's beauty, and it may kill a couple, but it's going to blind them all. But at the same time, wizards also get powered blind. You know what I mean? Wizards also get powered blind and they can cast it from a distance. Whale the Banshee doesn't have a saving throw penalty, but it doesn't have a bonus either. The fact that it has a bonus too, it just it makes the spell a little unreliable for me. It says 15 foot radius. This is a fucking lie. I don't know what it is, but I will send my druid into fucking melee range and cast this shit and it doesn't do a damn thing. It's like global blades for me. I don't know what it is about this spell. I just cannot seem to make it work properly. I just can't. Every time I use it or global blades, I'm always completely underwhelmed with the absolute nothing that happened. I have used this spell maybe 20 times, and I've seen it kill somebody twice, and I've seen the blind go off five times. Every other time, it doesn't seem to do anything at all. I'm not sure what I'm doing wrong. If anybody knows anything about this spell and can explain it to me, please let me know. But generally speaking, I'm underwhelmed every time I use this spell. On paper, it's not a bad spell, right? Strong B, maybe a weak A tier. Decent cast time, not super quick, but it's not super slow either. But, and also Druid gets Iron Skin, right? So they can go on melee for a couple seconds and get this off, but I'm just, I'm really underwhelmed by it. I'm going to leave it at B tier. If it actually did what it said it did, it would be an A tier spell for me. But the fact that it never, ever seems to, B tier for me all the way. Up next is Regeneration. This is one of the best spells that people get. This is for Cleric, Druid, and Shaman. So everybody gets it. Lasts for one round every two levels. Cast time a seven, so a decent cast time. It will target any creature, but only one. And that creature will regenerate three HP per second. So 18 HP per round. And it will last for one round per two levels. That's awesome. This by itself is inconsequential as hell. Enemies will be hitting you for a ridiculous amount of damage on insane difficulty. This by itself is useless. However, when you combine this with damage reduction from hardiness, maybe damage reduction from being a barbarian or a dwarven defender, or maybe the damage reduction from you having a mirror image up, or some other ability to reduce the amount of damage you're taking, and then you can combine it with other regeneration, right? Maybe you're using Black Razor from Hell. Maybe you're using Fulbane, which every swing will have a chance to heal you, or in Fulbane's example, it's 4 HP for level. That, plus this, plus damage reduction, plus other regeneration, maybe from Ring of Gax, maybe you're using Axe the Unyielding in the offhand, or whatever, whatever. You see where I'm going with this. This will add up to be fairly meaningful. This alone is not going to keep your front line's face pretty on insane difficulty. It's just not. Unless your front line is one dude wearing the fucking, you know, the big metal unit, plus the ring of Gax, plus Io's ring, plus blah, blah, blah to hit the AC cap, and then you hit him with this shit, then maybe he'll be okay. But for the most part, you're going to have multiple frontliners, right? Multiple frontliners. So you can't really do that. And, but... You, you can spread this out between multiple people, right? Say you're a barbarian, you got Corgan on the front line, maybe you got Mazzy as a fighter as well. You can cast this on everybody. And again, combining with the other abilities they get, this is a really meaningful amount of damage reduction. An elite fire giant, for example, will do 500 damage in a single round to somebody with no mitigation. That's what they do on insane difficulty. When you take hardiness, that cuts it a little bit over half, right? So it's doing about 260 damage per round. Then when you add on, you know, Defender of East Haven is 60%. That's another 20% off, right? And then you add this shit plus the other healing you're doing, and all of a sudden, instead of taking 500 damage per round, you only took 100. That's something you can heal through, right? That's something you can heal through. You keep an eye on them, cast a Greater Restoration or a Slow Heal level 6 spell, and you can keep them up through that by using that in combination with Regeneration. Like I said, this is not in and of itself is not enough. But combining this with other abilities, or maybe you just want to kite around for a few seconds, chug some healing potions, you get back into the fight pretty quick. This is a very meaningful amount of healing when you can combine it with other things. 
in and of itself, it's crap. But the fact that, again, like I said, you can combine it makes it an S tier spell in my book. This is one of the spells I use the most often, along with Greater Restoration, for my frontline support. Because your fighters need it. They absolutely need it. They cannot survive in melee. Like I said, when you're fighting three fire giants in the fire giant temple, that is 1,500 damage per round before mitigation. And like I said, it doesn't seem like a lot, but when you can combine the mitigation with the other healing and kiting and good potion use and good cleric backup to uh, greater restoration and heal when they need it, this, this adds up real quick. This adds up real quick. And even though it's only one round per two levels, you're, if you're a pure cleric especially, you level up pretty damn quick. And this is why I always prefer Vicky over Aerie, by the way. Because she's going to get a couple of these long before Vicky starts, or long before Airy starts getting a handful, and it's going to be stronger and more useful. Shield of the Archons, we already talked about a little bit with Impervious Sanctity of Mind. This is basically a weaker version of Spell Trap. Very long cast time, a 9 caster, only lasts for 3 rounds per level, and this will protect you from spells up to one half of your spell casting level, right? So if you're a druid, this is actually pretty weak. This doesn't really last for that long, but if you're a pure cleric and chance star, that's where you're going to be using this anyway. This will last for a decent amount of time. A decent amount of spells. The only time you really ever want to use this is when you're fighting um, a wizard who can cast Wish. Kangax, um, the stupid idiot added through Nera's quest, uh, a couple demi-liches, a couple very high-level wizards and thrown a ball. Um, I believe there's other couple enemies in Ascension who will use this as well. And if they get the double duration, improved alacrity, time stop, they will basically unload every spell under level 5 on one person and completely annihilate them. They're going to get hit by six magic, mickle, ma magic mickle, six magic missiles, six acid arrows, six flame arrows, and they're just going to explode into a million itty bitty little pieces. Shield of the Archons can help prevent that. Because they're not going to, you also have Cloak of the Mirroring, right? But they're not going to hit the person with Cloak of the Mirroring. They're going to go for the back line. If you have a spell trap up on a wizard, and you have Shield of the Archons up on your clerics and druids, then they're going to go for a fighter, who should have the HP to live through most of that, right? Should have the HP to live through most of that, because you can pause, give them the cloak real quick to reduce their magical damage reduction, and they should be, at this point, wearing fire damage or resistance gear, right? So, all these things combined, they should be able to live through it. So, basically, this is the Cleric Druid Shaman ability to get through that awfulness, right? We already talked about before how devastating it is to fight an enemy with time stop, because all you have to do is walk up and auto-attack, and you just die, and you have no defense. You have to time a um, protection for magical weapons to go off before that happens. Otherwise, Irenicus... Uh, Demogorgon, a Melisande, they could just walk up and murder you with impunity. And this is the same thing, but for wizards who are using spells. And this will protect you from that. So for that reason, this is an A-tier spell. Definitely not S-tier. You're not going to have this up all the time like you will Impervious Sanctity of Mind. But situationally, this is almost mandatory. Really, really good to have. In stark contrast to Stalker, which is another spell added through Icewind Dale for Druid and Shaman only. And this is... Quite possibly even worse than Conjure Earth Elemental, because this will summon two 11 HD Shambling Mounds. Conjure Earth Elemental has a chance to get one big beefy boy. Over here, you get two... I guess... I don't know. I mean, they're still beefy boys because they take up a lot of space, but they're not actually beefy boys. They are like... They're like thin people wearing fat suits, you know what I mean? They take up a lot of space, but they're not threatening in the slightest, you know what I mean? Because even if they punch you, you know there's not 600 pounds and their body that's going to be channeled into that fist. You know what I mean? These things have decent strength, but not great. Not as much as the Earth Elementals. And like I said, they're just... They're so worthless, man. I can't say enough bad things about this spell. It's crap. The only good thing about it is the last eight hours, right? So if somehow you keep a Shambling Mount alive that long, kudos to you, man. Power to you. What a big piece of crap spell. Really, a lot of these spells are just absolute shit. And they really should be... If this was a level 6 spell, I still wouldn't use it, right? Because Conjure Earth, uh, Conjure Animals is way better Icewind Dale spell, and Conjure Fire Elemental is a way better Baldur's Gate spell. Big piece of crap, big pass for me. Up next, uh, we're going to do the Shaman spell. This is Ether Gate, available to Shamans only. This is basically an altered version of the Mage spell. Decent cast time of 3, the exact same as Maze. However, the duration is different. It's 5 rounds flat. For those who don't remember, May's spell was based on the ability score of the person you're casting it on. If you're casting it on a moron, he will be stuck in that maze forever. If you're casting it on someone who has a decent amount of intelligence, they'll be in there for a couple rounds. If you cast it on somebody who's really smart, they'll be in there for 1d4 rounds max. This will always have a base round of 5. So this is still fairly useful. The problem is it doesn't go through MR, right? So you can't use this on a planetar. You still have to use Imprisonment to get rid of a Planetar in instantly. Maze will not work because they start out with 100 MR. Obviously, you can't use this on Golems or a variety of other creatures who have a ridiculous amount of MR. And you can technically, it says you can lower their MR, but what a waste of time. 
The fact this only lasts five rounds on top of it. The only time you'd ever really, really want to use this spell is if you are like right next to a beholder and you already have impervious sanctity of mind and other protection spells up. You can maybe get an ether gate off, like maybe like the twisted rune, right? Maybe you get a quick ether gate on the beholder off. That way you can focus on killing the vampire and knocking out the chick using the staff of the magi. So maybe you can find use for it there. Another situational fight because it does have a quick cast time of three. Just like regular May spell. And unlike the other druid spell uh, spells we talked about, right? Where you get a level four uh, mage spell, level seven. This spell is a level eight spell that you get at level seven. Mage spell is level eight. This is only level seven. So that's actually not that bad. That's actually not that bad. I say that, and now honestly, I'm not entirely sure. Now for some dumb reason, I think that mage spell might be level seven. I'm 99.9% .9 sure that mage spell is level um is level eight but now i'm nervous as fuck so i gotta go double check i gotta alt tab and look it up i don't ever use ma a maze i just i just don't come on show me level eight all right it's good i'm a genius boys i'm a fucking genius it is level eight i'm right yes nailed it all right so you get, actually get this before the mages do which is interesting that doesn't happen for like any other spell in here i don't think there's a, a single spell that clerics and druids get and shamans get before wizards this is the only one so that's kind of cool. And situationally, this can be useful. So for that reason, I'm going to leave it at B tier. Um, it's not an amazing spell, but there will be times when you're like, shit, you know, shit's hitting the fan, or this is a really nasty fight. If I could just take somebody out of the fight real quick, even for just a little bit, I can turn the tide in my favor. 30 seconds is a long time. It doesn't seem like a long time, but it is. So for that reason, it's a B tier spell. Uh, let's go and talk about the... Uh, now we're going to be talking about uh, cleric spells only from here on out. Let's go and hit the good cleric first, then we'll go and talk about the uh, evil cleric spell. So the good cleric spell they get is Holy Word. We'll check something here. Okay, Holy Word. Um, very quick cast number one, AoE, 15 foot radius, and will hit e evil enemies only with no saving throw. And depending on their HD slash levels, less than four, they will die. Four to seven is stun. Eight to 11 is stun for one turn with 75%, excuse me, Slowed for one turn, 75% chance of spell failure. And 12 and up, deafened for one turn with a 50% chance of spell failure. This seems on paper like it'd be really useful. And in a sense, it kind of is, but at the same time, it kind of isn't. The best effect that you could possibly get from a holy word is only for 4 to 7, which is a stun. The slow is nice, but you can get a slow off, generally speaking, fairly reliably anyways. Because a slow is only a level 3 wizard spell, but it comes with a minus 4 penalty. The spell failure is basically whatever, as I said before. Um, when it comes to being deafened, and I believe even regular spell failure, you can negate that with a vocalized spell. And wizards will cast vocalize to get rid of deafened, so that's not an issue at all. The spell failure, I think, with this one actually does stick regardless of the vocalize, but it's just... It's really underwhelming for me. Um, it's really underwhelming for me. I've tried to use this a lot against beholders. It does absolutely jack all against them. Although, to be honest, I think Beholders are... I think some Beholders might actually be classified as neutral. I think they're mostly neutral and lawful evil, though, now that I think about it. I think 99% of Beholders are neutral and lawful evil. Um, a lot of enemy creatures will actually be neutral, as weird as that sounds. Obviously, they won't do anything to good creatures, although there's very few of those, like the Paladins. So, this will hit generally most enemies. And again, there's no save, and it goes off instantly. So, for that reason, I'm leaving it at B tier. This can be useful in times. Most of your enemies you're going to find in Baldur's Gate 2 are around this level. And then throwing a ball, pretty much everything is level 12 and up. It's the same reason that um, the Death Blow is so fucking useless as a fighter HLA. Because there's almost nothing you fight that's going to be getting hit by this crap down here. And this just gets progressively worse and worse. If you're fighting a fighter... If you're fighting a big group of fighters, this does absolutely nothing. Because being deafened as a fighter is worthless as hell. What's he not going to be able to use his war cry ability? Big fucking deal, right? Who cares? But against enemy clerics, this can be useful. And against enemy wizards, this can be useful. But like I said, a lot of enemies will have a ways around this. Or it will just not seem to do anything at all. Which happens a lot in my game. So, I would say it's B tier. Because there are going to be times where you're going to be like, Yeah, this is a great spell to use for this group of enemies real quick. But generally speaking, I don't use it that often. I don't use it that often. But um, in the times that it does work, it is pretty damn powerful. So I'm going to go and leave it at B tier. All right. Uh, that was the uh, good version. Now let's get... Where is my evil cleric? Is this the evil cleric? Here he is. Okay. So all the abilities from here on are cleric only. And this will... Oh, uh, let me go talk about the uh, good version of uh, Finger of Death real quick. So the good version... Evil clerics get a special ability called Destruction. And good clerics get Finger of Death. Finger of Death is the exact same as the mage version, right? 
Creature will make a save with a minus two penalty. If they successfully save, they take 2d8 plus one damage per level to caster. If they fail, they die. Big fucking deal. This is a C-tier spell of the way. This does nothing to undead. Almost every cleric of the game is going to have Death Ward up. Um, enemy fighters, you know, they have a pretty decent saver spell, though you might be able to take out one with this spell, but even then, it's just, it's so lackluster. It's so damn lackluster, it's frustrating. And uh, enemy wizards are going to have protections against this shit too, so you're not going to be able to hit them with it. Power Word Kill is going to be more useful for dealing with enemy wizards, because then if you get them a little bit lower, you can hit them with that shit. But I don't know. I've, I've used this a couple times in the past, and I've always been basically underwhelmed at just how often it fucking fails. The only time you'd really want to use a Finger of Death is again before, like we talked about, against a Beholder. But fighting Beholders is risky. Even with Impervious Sanctity in mind, the thing about Beholders is their improved calls for help is actually really good. If you walk into a Beholder Lair, and I don't believe the Beholder Lair in Baldur's Gate City does this, but I know for a fact the one in the Underdark does, where if you aggro a couple Beholders, all of a sudden every Beholder in the Hive is coming at you. And Hive Mothers are there too, and Hive Mothers don't give a shit about Impervious Sanctity of mind. They don't. And so it's really risky to try to cast Finger of Death on a Beholder. Because chances are, he's got buddies coming along soon, and Beholders are devastating. Absolutely devastating in this game. So this is not enough to make you say, I can confidently go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Beholders in Baldur's Gate 2. But, I don't know. It's just really underwhelming to me. I've used this a lot, and I'm always disappointed, so I'm going to leave it at C-tier spell. Especially because evil clerics get a better version of it, right? Which is Destruction. This is coming over from Icewind Dale, so it's not the original Baldur's Gate. This is the exact same thing. However, the victim has to make a penalty of save versus death at minus 4, and if they fail, they take 8d6 points of magic damage. This is evil only, and if it does succeed, they're disintegrated. However, I believe the cast time is different. This is 9. I believe this is only 5? Let me double check. Yeah, 5. So the cast time is longer. However, it's really cool, right? It's really cool. Um, disintegration is always a fun ability. You don't get to use it all that often, but... Um, yeah, um, it's still it's still a spell I never use. I just don't use it. I just don't because typically speaking, my clerics are not for offensive spell casting. They're for support. They're going to be using regeneration, greater restoration, or defending themselves with greater divine protection. They're not really going offensive with these spells and abilities. However, destruction gives them the opportunity to be like, hey, if you're rocking a lot of divine casters, maybe you want to take one or two of these. Maybe a couple of firestorms or earthquakes. Maybe it'll be effective if you combine them all together. And they will be more effective in that case. If, I don't know, it is what it is, right? You can chain contingency this if you are an evil um, cleric wizard. Um, so that is something interesting. You know, somebody to save with a minus four penalty three times is, you know, chances are they're going to fail that shit. But then again, you also got to realize what you just did, right? You used a chain contingency and destruction. You could have chain contingency to Horde Wilton or Incendiary Cloud or something like that. So the opportunity cost of wasting that on this is just pff, pass for me. Now, I never use this shit. Same with Finger of Death, which they also get for some hilarious reason, by the way. Up next is Energy Drain, also worthless. This is practically roleplay tier, to be honest. This is a very quick cast time of three. Targets one creature, and they lose two levels of experience. They will lose uh, hit dice, hit points, and ability permanently. They can only be restored to the restoration spell. Here's the thing. It, it can also be only cast by evil clerics, by the way. Here's the thing. For some dumb reason, this doesn't seem to stack. I don't know why. However, you can combine it with multiple clerics. So if you have six people cast Energy Drain, that person will lose 12 levels, which is fucking irrelevant, right? Who cares? Also, it doesn't do anything to Undead, by the way, right? So who cares? A big fucking who cares? What I mean by uh, doesn't stack, for some weird, re weird reason, when you use this with the same person on one target on enemies, this doesn't actually seem to work and drain them over and over and over again. So... <sighs> It's just really, really weird to me. It looks cool. It sounds cool. I think personally, if this gave the levels to you temporarily, like it gave you the HP, um, extra levels and abilities, that would be fucking awesome. But it doesn't. All it does is drain them. So who the fuck cares? You know what I mean? Like, you got to keep in mind that vampires get this built into their auto attack. To their auto attack. And it's cumulative. This is a level 7 spell, and it's not cumulative. Hilarious. What a waste of fucking time. Get it off my screen. Up next is Gate. I don't, I'm don't. i pretty sure good clerics get Gate too, though, right? Yeah, they do. I just want to make sure. Um, Gate will summon a Baylor with our version of SES. Depending on your version of Baldur's Gate, you might get a Pit Fiend, and our version, you're getting a Baylor. However, um, it says Baylor or Pit Fiend. Every single time I've cast this spell, I've only gotten Baylor. Never once have I gotten a Pit Fiend, so I'm not sure why it says that. Maybe there is a very small, insignificant chance 
But um, Baylors are pretty devastating. They hit very, very hard. They have the instant death mechanic that we all know and love and seen many times in the past. So they are actually fairly tanky. They have a high AC. They have 25 strength like most demons do. So they hit hard as hell with a plus three weapon. They also have their built-in fire shield bullshit, their instant death mechanics. They have gaze mechanics. So they're fairly useful. But what's weird is every time I summon this spell, for some dumb reason, it bugs out. And I think that might just be my version. So you guys can play around with this and tell me what you, uh, tell me what's happening to you. Whenever I use this spell with Icewind Dale, the first thing the demon does is murder the caster and then it stands there AFK. You can basically kill it with anything you want. It will not attack the rest of your party even while being attacked. It will not attack enemies either. So I think what ended up happening is my version is bugged out or the latest SCS AI is fucked up in some way or manner or maybe possibly Ascension is doing something to it. I'm not sure. It might not even be SCS. It might be some other mod that's conflicting. But in my current version, this is basically useless. But I'm going to pretend that in your version, it's an actual Baylor being summoned. Uh, if you get protection from evil up, um, you're going to be basically immune to the creature until it runs out of enemies, in which case it will still attack you anyways, right? Protection from evil doesn't mean it won't hit you. It just means that you're its last target. So keep that in mind. In the original version of Baldur's Gate, protection of evil would really make you immune. But no longer. No longer. It will go for you if it can't hit anything else. So keep that in mind. Baylors are fairly devastating. They're not super tanky, but they are fairly damn tanky, especially in, if you get this early on in Baldur's Gate 2, right? A Baylor can clean house for most enemies. It really can. And don't forget, every time you're hitting it, you're taking fire damage too, right? So it can wipe out a group of enemies pretty damn quickly, I gotta say. I gotta say. But um, it does last a long time too, 33 rounds, but I still don't use this. I still don't use this. Even if it worked all the time, I still wouldn't use it just because it's too damn risky. All it takes is one auto attack to decapitate somebody, and it's just too damn risky. Even though this was supposed to be nerfed and it shouldn't decapitate, it still can. So you got to watch out for that, guys. Got to watch out for that. I pass on this spell. Um, I would rate it as a B-tier spell just because it's damn devastating. It is damn devastating to summon this, especially in the middle of Baldur's Gate 2 Shadows of Om, when you just get 1.5 million XP and unlock this shit as a pure cleric. This is a devastating spell, but um, I don't use it. Up next is Greater Divine Protection. This is absolutely amazing. Added from ice, um, the Icewind Delification of SCS. Clerics only. Evil and good clerics both have access to it. And it will make you 100% immune to damage for the duration of spell and give you 100% magic resistance for three rounds. So think of this as a more effective but shorter protection from magical weapons. Awesome. Awesome. Only lasts for three rounds, but again, it has the same instant cast time of one, right? So if your cleric's about to get focused, boom, greater divine protection, and it's basically like a paladin bubble from WoW, right? You're practically immune to everything. You aren't truly immune to everything. Because it says immunity to damage. This doesn't mean your immunity to dispel effects from getting hit by a planetar sword, nor are immune to, immune to decapitation effects from a Baylor, etc., etc. You get the picture. Um, but, generally speaking, if you cast this, your cleric is not going to die. Generally speaking, cast this and you're not going to die. This is your oh shit button. This is your I'm a fucking god. I'm going to walk into the middle of an enemy, a massive group of enemies. I'm going to cast this and then rain down hellfire with firestorm or earthquake, whatever the fuck you want to do. So there's all sorts of things. You, I wouldn't do earthquake, but you know what I mean. There's all sorts of things you can do to play with this. I mostly use it for oh shit buttons or when I'm going into a nasty fight. And I don't want my clerics to die in the next three rounds. You know what I mean? So really, really useful. S tier all the way. Absolutely amazing save. A lot of people tell me this spell sucks, and I think they're absolutely crazy. It's amazing. Absolutely amazing. Being immune to shit is just so fucking good. Up next is Greater Restoration. This is also an S-tier spell. One of the best that clerics get. In fact, I think it might actually be the best single-target cleric spell that clerics get. What this will do is it will instantly heal everyone, anyone to full. One person also cures disease and poisons. Also cures level drain, etc., etc. It will make the cleric tired. And um, just like regular rest of restoration, but this is basically an oh shit, somebody's about to fucking die, and you instantly heal into full because it's a super quick cast time of three, right? Heal is what you use when someone's at half HP and taking damage. Greater restoration is what you use when you see a fucking when you see somebody stunned and about to get mauled by a dragon. You're like, I need to get a heal up now, or this dude is fucking dead. You know what I mean? And it's just really good at that. I heard someone say in the base game that this actually heals everybody in the party. I vaguely recall that it has been 15 years since I played the original Baldur's Gate 2. So I got to tell you, it's been a long time. So I can't say with certainty whether that's the case. If you're playing with no mods, you might want to try it out to make sure. Um, if it does do that, then this is by far the best spell in the game. And if it does do that, this is still one of the best spells in the game. 
Awesome spell. I use this on fighters all the time who are tanking. This is great to hit somebody who just got annihilated, um, but with their spell protections annihilated and are taking massive amounts of damage. This is just your quick, oh shit, somebody needs to be saved. And it does it better than any other spell in the game. I think uh, it's tough to say whether this is better than Mass Ray's Dead, because Mass Ray's Dead will heal everybody for a massive amount, but Greater Restoration is a full amount, right? So if you got a fighter in the front line with Larlox who has a max HP of like 400, Greater Restoration is going to heal him for 400. So, awesome spell. Up next is Rez. This is... This is garbage. This is literally the Rez Dead spell, but it heals him to full. It's two levels higher, however, and we just talked about some of the awesome spells you get, right? Regeneration, Privy Sanctity of Mind, Greater Restoration, Greater Divine Protection. So... If you're resing somebody, you're not doing it in combat because that's fucking suicide, right? You don't want to res somebody with full, uh, even with coming back with full HP in combat because chances are all it takes is for some enemy to go on them and they're going to explode in two seconds. So you only ever use this out of combat. And if you're out of combat, just use Raise Dead and fucking heal him, right? You don't need to re-memorize level 7 spells. You're going to have more level 5 spells than 7, so it just seems moot and pointless. And for those who do want to use this in combat, keep in mind that the heal is delayed. Just like with Maz Frey's Dead. So if you cast Resurrection on somebody, they're going to come back with 1 HP. And then a split second later, they get healed to full. If you do this and they resurrect next to an enemy, and that enemy turns and smacks them, congratulations, you just got one of your party members permanently killed because you were too lazy to fucking wait until out of combat. You know what I mean? It's just... This spell blows. I'm gonna. It's still useful, so I'm gonna leave it at B tier. But it's just, it's garbage. It's such garbage. I never use this shit. I never memorize it. But they maybe you know. I'm trying to think of a situation where I'm like, I need resurrection right now, and I fucking can't. I just can't think of one. Because even if you use mass raise dead, all it takes is three healing potions for ninety percent of your party to get back to full HP. So it's like whatever, man. I don't know. Uh, Shield Arrowcons we talked about Sunray. Um, this is an anti-undead effect, although it will hit other creatures as well. 15 foot radius, decent cast number 4, and enemies around you will take 3d6 points of damage and must save your spell will be blinded. Undead take 1d6 per level of a caster and must save your spell or be destroyed. So it hits undead fairly hard. Like I said before, if you're a level 15 cleric, 15d6, that's a lot of damage, dude. It really is. But again, you have to be close to the undead, which is risky for a cleric as we talked about before, and... Again, I, for some reason, I use this spell a lot, and it just doesn't seem to really hit everything despite it saying 15-foot radius. I'm not sure what the actual radius is, but I see enemies avoid this a lot. It might be the same mechanic that lets you run through a grease spell or a cloud spell without taking damage, where it's just like there's a certain part of the round where it goes off, and if somebody is moving at the time, they miss it. Kind of like Improved Taste, right? If you cast Improved Taste on a party member and they move, the Improved Taste will go off where the party member was and the party member won't get it. So maybe Sunray something like that where if the enemies move, they don't get hit. I don't know. Either way, decent. Decent against Undead. But again, by the time you're getting this shit, the only other time you're going to fight Undead is Bodhi's Lair, right? So you're only going to use this like once. There's that one time in Sultan SLR, but those can be cleaned out by one, one fighter with Improved Taste. He doesn't need this shit. You know what I mean? One, improve, one fighter with improved taste and uh, Mace of Disruption plus two will wipe out a whole group of undead. He doesn't need no Sunray. You know what I mean? Up next is Symbol Death. This is the exact same thing as the Mage version, and it's just as shitty. Enemy creatures with 60 H HP or more are completely immune, and there's no saving throw penalty. I'm, I'm not even going to read the rest. This it's, it's such shit. Such absolute shit. There's no point. But one thing you can say is that this is a level 7 spell, so I guess they kind of get it before wizards do. But who the fuck cares? Who the fuck cares? Actually, I don't, I don't even know that's true. You know what, fuck it. I'm, pretend I don't say anything at all. This spell sucks. Skip it. Up next is saving uh, Symbol Fear. This one was added through Icewind Dale, but it's still just as useless. It do have a save with a minus four penalty, but every enemy in the game will have protection from fear. Most enemies, there's a lot of enemies who are just flat out immune, right? But every cleric and wizard in the game is going to cast protection from fear. Everyone in the game is going to do it because it was such a strong spell on BG1. Big piece of crap. Absolutely no point. Again, I'm not even going to bother reading it. These are all going to be stupidly long cast times. Well, not all of them, but these first couple are with a 12-foot radius. Up next is uh, hope, uh, Symbol Hopelessness. This was also added through Icewind Dale, and this one's actually not as bad. This is the same as the Hopelessness spell, but it comes with a minus 2 penalty, and then they go unconscious and can be murdered with impunity, lasts for 2 turns. That's not bad. That's not bad at all. You can also use this to nullify Emotion Hope, within the area of effect, which Drow will use, but I wouldn't waste a level 7 spell on that. Hit that with a remove magic or something. You don't need this shit for it. The minus 2 penalty to knock people unconscious, though, isn't bad, but do keep in mind, all of these can hit your party member, too. Keep that in mind. Up next is Symbol Pain. This one's actually worse. Um, uh, 
those who fail their saves are hit with a minus four penalty to attack rolls, two penalty to dex, and two to AC. The problem is, again, no penalty to save. No penalty to save. Saving throw completely negates, and this can hit your party too. So you have to lay a trap for this, or do it at a group of enemies who are just standing there and not attacking you. How often does that happen, right? The exception to these, I gotta say, is Simple Stun. Simple Stun is actually pretty devastating. It comes with a minus four penalty, and you're stunned for two plus one for every three levels of the caster. This alone of the symbols is actually worth using, and this has actually killed me in the past too. Because I cast it and got one of my party members stuck in it and they got murdered. I don't think this is what happened to Duke Nukem. I'm pretty sure he got hit by a paralytic bolt, but it might have been the simple stun. I'm not sure. Tough to say. Either way, this one's actually devastating. We all know why stuns are so effective in Baldur's Gate. If you're stunned, every attack on you lands and you're going to die in two seconds, right? And this is an AoE with a minus four penalty. That's big. Combine that shit with a Malison, and that's a minus 8 penalty to everybody. Combine that with a cur uh, Curse, and that's a minus 9 penalty. This shit will hit a lot. If you combine multiple casters using these together, this is actually pretty fucking devastating. If you can combine this with a symbol or with a um, chain contingency as a cleric wizard, you are basically guaranteed to stun every enemy with a chain contingency symbol stun. It is devastating. Devastating. So that makes this actually really good. I'm going to put it at A tier, not S tier for a couple reasons. One, it can hit your own fucking party. And two, there are times when you use this spell and it does not go off. For some dumbass reason, it just doesn't go off. Same with Delayed Blast Fireball. Same with Thief Traps. I don't know why, but sometimes you use this shit and it doesn't work. And that is infuriating. And But like I said, it's... Honestly, this probably is an S2 spell. You know what? I, I gotta, the more I think about it and the more I've, I've tried to use this in the past, I shy away from it because, again, we, the reasons we just talked about, but this is really, honestly, an S2 spell. It's very, very, very powerful. And lastly is Unholy Word. It is the exact same thing as Holy Word, except it hits good people. What a big fucking waste of time. There's like five enemies in the game that are uh, hit by good people. It's like, there's the Paladins you fight in Baldur's Gate 2, then the Paladins you fight in uh, Throw the Ball. I think even the Monks with Balthazar aren't actually classified as good. I think they're actually neutral. Although Balthazar himself is good. But great, you fucking muted a Monk. Big deal, right? Who cares? And in fact, I think he's actually immune to this shit too, because he's an Ascension boss. So it's just, I don't know, man. Unholy Word is just a big waste of time. There are some good abilities that evil clerics get. Unholy Word, or um, there's some good clerics that... Uh, Evil clerics get, but Unholy Word is not fucking one of them. It's just not one of them. So, for that reason, it's crap. And that is going to do it here for us, guys. We're just going to double check to make sure I didn't miss anything. That's why I have all these extra idiots here, just to make absolutely sure. I think we're good. So, that is it for the day, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Really appreciate it. I apologize. We've, mu we've missed so many damn streams lately. We will be back soon. I promise we'll be back to uploading very soon. Right with this video, we're going to be getting some more videos up soon. The next video we have coming up is going to be our... Um, our kit guide and class guide. We're going to talk about every single class in Baldur's Gate, multi classes, dual classes, etc. It's going to be a really long video. I hope it should be really fun and entertaining, and people can disagree with me all they want about the tiers because that's always fun. I love talking to you guys about spells. Anyone who talks in comments and says I'm an idiot and that a certain spell is awesome, I love hearing from you guys. If you tell me that you love a certain spell and you had a situation where it just worked so well for you, I want to hear it. Let me know. And as always, guys, thanks for watching. And remember, no matter what happens in life, you're the best there ever was and ever will be. I love you, and God loves you, and you can do anything, dudes. And don't you ever forget that shit. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you next time.